Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Turning Point. We have an awesome episode today. Another police officer, but this isn't a typical one. We've had a very interesting um, set of conversations in the past. This one is a police officer named Roland Crystal. Roland is an awesome bloke. I've had a chat with him multiple times this week, and there's a unique aspect to this story. Later on in this video, I'm going to be playing you a very fascinating of a woman that was completely mistreated by the police. Not Roland, this is a different set of police officers, but Roland made an awesome gesture and he ended up having an interview with this lovely lady named Nicole. Now, in a second, I'm going to bring Roland in, but that video is a really amazing video and in a second, we're going to play it. But first, Roland, I want to welcome you to the show. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, Joel. Thanks for having me, mate. So, Roland, 31 years in the force. Um, what did you get up to in that time? <laughs> How long have you got? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, I've got time um, for you, brother. <laughs> and they were, 30 of them were very good years. Yeah. I spent my time uh, on the street in uniform, uh, frontline duties, uh, primarily the last uh, 23 of those years were in the highway patrol. Mm. Um, so I focus on um, the reduction of road trauma. Not an easy product to sell, but um, the last six years of my highway patrol was with the State Crime Command, so um, Middle Eastern Organised Crime and Raptor Squad. Mm. That's uh, that's intense. Um, I'm sure you'd agree. I, I, I think, um, you know, when, when people think about, you know, what's going on in the country, I mean, in Queensland, for example, they have a massive crime wave, yet they're still enforcing these jabs on a lot of the police force. And it's like, guys, do you really want to have, you know, a gutted police force, especially people that have been in the force for 31 years? You were the most mm. experienced member on your team. And, you know, there's a big element of, you know, training up the younger guys so they can get that. But they're being robbed of that. They're being robbed of that experience. How is the police unit that you were in going to suffer after this? Well, you're, you're exactly right. Um, but we're seeing this right across the board, aren't we? Uh, John Lada is a prime example um, but we are seeing across the board that frontline industries are being struck where it seems that experience and uh, dedication to duty uh, just don't stack up anymore they just don't seem to measure up to what is required mm -hmm. and so all the frontline areas are going to suffer it, it's a it's a terrible tragedy i you know I've, I've been trying to find some ways that we can reform the police and and their operations and and move things forward and um i've been looking for answers on this and it, there's been, there's been some good stuff but it really does it really does seem like we're going to need a complete overhaul here um after a royal commission's conducted on the handling of the pandemic including the police is that sort of something that you, you've sort of wrestled with or do you have any any other ideas on how we can improve this look Primarily, um, I was obviously happy with the way the police force conducted most of its duties. Um, the directions and orders that came down from the chain of command made, laurel, made legal and moral good sense uh, up until the requirement to enforce these public health orders, which in my mind had no integrity. Um, in terms of reforming of the police force, that's obviously um, just one facet of the community that needs reforming. Um, this comes down from above the police, um, so the reform has to go higher. You, you've taken enormous risk um, in giving this. This has cost you your job, and it uh, it's it's not easy. I mean, you've got you've got a family, you've got you know mouths to feed, and um, to see you know, just to see that thrown away from the government. You know, this is this must be a very important message to you. What 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 is this the key message you want to send? Well, there's various aspects, um, but obviously, police and in, anyone else in a government agency or even in private enterprise are often gagged by fairly appropriate policies that restrict what you can say and when when you're representing your agency. So, in order to be able to speak my mind, I obviously had to leave the department. Um, the main message that I have is a message to my colleagues or my former colleagues now, and that's not only New South Wales police, it's it's police across this great nation of Australia. And that message is that um, we need to be very mindful that we only police the community with their consent. 
That's right. And if we don't do that properly, that consent will be withdrawn. Mm. And we've all seen some things that uh, concern us. And so I'm speaking to my colleagues and as um, Alex Cooney from Cops for COVID Truth, the other resigned officer from New South Wales, um, has tried to say, my colleagues, you have original authority. Uh, yeah. What you do is primarily comes back to you. You have to be able to justify what you do. Yeah. I I get so frustrated with this because we've been having these discussions for many weeks now. It's not like mm. leaders cannot do this. It's being done right overseas. They're doing a phenomenal job. You know, mm. I, I, I'm right there with you. I support the cops up until this this pandemic. You know, I was standing there with the cops at the um, at the the Captain Cook statue when people were trying to deface it. Black Lives Matters protesters going around making an American issue what it is in Australia, and I stood with them and I, the mounted police. And now yeah. I found myself standing against the mounted police, against police officers enforcing these, in my opinion, these unlawful mandates, and. I bring this up not to talk about myself, but to talk about leadership overseas. If we look at Florida, if we look at Ron DeSantis, this is the news that just came out today. We found that DeSantis is planning a $5,000 bonus for mistreated blue state cops to move to Florida. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. You're thinking, what did they do to deserve $5,000? Hold on. Here it is. Florida's legislator is planning a special session to rule that nobody should lose their jobs over a jab mandate, said Governor Ron DeSantis, and he hopes to sign legislation giving a $5,000 bonus to any out-of-state law enforcement officers relocating to Florida. So this is a quote he said. So New York, Minneapolis, Seattle, if you're being treated well, we'll treat you better here, he said. You can you can fill important needs here for us and we'll compensate you as a result. What a difference. What a change. I mean, it, I, oh yeah, yeah, I'll see you over there. It's, uh, I, I mean, tr that's true leadership. What, what, what would that mean to you if a premier came out and really led the way on that? Well, it'd, it'd make the world a difference, wouldn't it? You know, we, we look to our leaders, be they uh, politicians or even as police, we look to our chain of command for the appropriate signals and the appropriate leadership and, and guidance. Um, and when the fish seems to rot from the head, be it government or be it in whatever agency you're in, that just makes everything that much harder. And it's mm. and, and it's a real it really strikes you to the core when when the problems and the uh, the difficulties come from your own department, especially when you've devoted you know a lifetime to that department. Mm. Yeah, I I, I really I really get upset because. Everywhere I look, I'm a young bloke. I'm only 24. I'm learning. I've got a lot to learn in this life. But when I look around, all I see is a lack of leadership and a, and a vacuum. And the worst kinds of people are filling that vacuum and they're making things worse. They're making things terribly worse. And it's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. I, I want to see our country become a really strong and great and prosperous country. Australia is the, was the best country in the world before this pandemic. Mm. I loved it here. It was beautiful. That's why my parents picked this country when they moved here. Um, it, it's, it, was this, it was dysfunctional where we came from. And he, it, here it was order. It was stability. It was, it was freedom. You could you know, go to the beach. You could four-wheel drive on the beach. You could fish where you wanted. And it's just become worse and worse and worse. And now it's culminated into what we have now. You, you had a leadership role in your um, unit what kind of leadership um, style did you take and how would you compare it to what we're seeing with government now? Well, my role was um, I didn't take on a supervisory role as such. I remained as a, uh, as a senior constable because that's the role that I enjoyed. Um, but still, you, when you have the years of service, you have situational leadership. Um, You've always got to look at inclusivity. You've got to look at um, the needs of your team and make sure that um, you future-proof a section. Future-proofing is always very important. So looking at um, how the unit can operate down track and whether or not um, all people in that unit can at least perform a number of functions. Um, that's something that I think has really been lost. 
because we're losing that uh, seniority, we're losing that experience, and you can't future-proof a section when you leave it um, shy of all those talents that have taken years to build up. Mm. What What would your you, you you've you've given up your job for um, to send a message? And there are people listening right now which are saying, for example, they're losing their job tomorrow because of these mandates. What would your message to be so, to someone like Christine who's messaged that? Same thing, she's losing her job tomorrow. Look, my heart goes out to everyone who's who's in this position. Um, my message is um, that we can't have a community without unity, which is a very important point. And this is a time when the Australian spirit needs to kick in and we need to be mindful of our, not just our relatives, but our neighbours now and people throughout our community who are hurting. Um, this is where we're going to see whether the Australian spirit is as strong as we all believed it was. Um, we, we cannot fall into the trap of the divisive sort of um, medical apartheid that is being set up around us. We see a lot of uh, businesses that are fighting against that and I commend them and to anyone who is losing their job and, and in that terrible predicament, um, reach out to your community to those who can support you. I, I think that um, I think that some some of the lawyers that I've had on board, including AFL solicitors, they've said, um, you know, don't resign, let them fire you. But obviously you're an exception to that because you've wanted to send a message and you can't do that while you wear the uniform. Correct. Um, so you've take you've really taken one for the team being one of the elder uh, sort of police officers. Um, and um and I, I can't say it enough um roland you know you've taken an enormous you know risk for yourself and your family in doing this and you're a police officer and you're on camera you're putting your face out there you worked in organized crime that that you know there are many police officers i know when they leave the force they change their name and everything because of the things that they've done um you know the, the bad people they've put away and no look more power to you roland thank you, you if people can't see that you've got, there's a reason Roland is speaking up. You know, he's got everything to lose. You know, he's the balancing. There's no balancing act. He's either a fool or he really believes something and he's fearful of, of what's going on. And I don't think he's a fool. And in the interview later on, I'm you're going to see him interact with the public. Roland, um, I, 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 I'm curious. I'm curious your thoughts on. Um, on, on, I don't, I don't know if I should ask you about the police leadership because you said it was a top-down thing, um, and possibly even beyond. Politically speaking, how do we get out of this? Well, look. Ordinarily, um, we look to elections to change things, um, but there's an urgency. Obviously, um, how how long do we wait? Um, do we wait for the next election, and can we have confidence in that election? Uh, what we've seen in the American elections, I think, um, has shaken our confidence in that process. How do we change things? Well, one, it's it's in our attitude. What's what's in our mind? Um, nothing happens without thought. Thought is where we first start a creation. And if we succumb to fear and division, then we are going down a path that is going to be very destructive. And so we need to be mindful of our thoughts and guard our, our, our thoughts first. We need to be positive. We need to look at unity and support. And one of the best ways to do that, in my mind, is to actually turn off the mainstream media because all that does is feed us fear, uh, fear and division. And so guard your thoughts and be positive and look for opportunities um, to support one another. Mm. Do, do you think that... Um... What, when it comes to human rights uh, abuses, what specifically are the police's, uh, these orders, they're breaches of human rights, what, what specifically? Well, as our Prime Minister recently boasted, Australia is one of the nations that uh, forged the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948 after World War II. Uh, we've heard the Prime Minister say that we're a nation that does not coerce or force uh, people to accept medication um, 
I find those words uh, to be in contradiction to what we're actually seeing playing out in our communities through our chief health officers and through our premiers. Um, there's there's a lot of contradiction, and we shouldn't be getting contradiction from the leadership of the nation. It really is a. Um, I mean, how can we dictate to anyone around the world after what we've witnessed in Australia? I mean, we've got no leg to stand on. You know, North Korea and um, China, yeah. they're blushing at what they see in Australia. The, yeah. the overreach that, that's happened has been absolutely astonishing. I had, um, I hate I hate talking about myself. I really do. I wish there was someone else who could say this, but there are eight sets of officers that have come to my house. I can't help but feel that their resources are better used elsewhere. They're not the same set. They're a different set every time. It's like, why yeah. are you? Doing this, I'm a law-abiding citizen. I'm just hanging out. I'm doing my thing. I'm a journalist. Yeah. Um, yet, you know, you, you thought that this was a good idea. Um, I, I just, I, I'm baffled. I'm baffled. So you can bet those officers wouldn't have been doing that of their own volition. You know, that's that's not what the police on the street want to be doing. Mm. Mm. What well, well, one one set of officers? <laughs> I can't help but say, but they 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 openly so they came in the in the house and that they they were just having a chat and whatever and talking about upcoming events that were happening and um and th then they 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 start talking about the jab and they're like we're not getting the jab oh no, we're not sticking that stuff in us in our skin and they were serious like that <laughs> it was it was funny because the different um, officers they they say they come from different um, stations and it's funny mm. how you see. Politics of each station by the officers that come out. Um, I'm glad I had. I, I'm genuinely glad I've actually had the opportunity to meet so many different police um, over the course of this, both on both on camera and and off camera. And it's been interesting. Don't get me wrong. I, the hassling's annoying. I mean, this is my home. I've got a family here. But um, but at the same time, it has been interesting seeing the different types, and it's allowed me to see that you know a lot of the idiotic comments made from um, people on my side that you know. All officers are, you know, Freemasons. It's like, come on, guys. These people, these people have families to go back to. They're not, you know, for God's sake. Like, can can we just for two seconds think about this critically? Um, and and it's 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 been it's been fascinating just just thinking about that. But um, I would have it would be great to see the resources used a bit better. I mean, especially in Queensland. I mean, that's another story. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Look, um. You know, it, it is so easy to fall into the um, pattern of just being critical. But uh, let he who is without fault, you know, cast the first stone. I'm far from perfect. Over my 30 years, I've made more mistakes than I'd care to, care to remember. Um, but somehow I got through. But I always had the intention and the mindset to do my job honourably. Um, now, most people go into the force with that mindset. They go in there to be part of the community. Um, and we've got so many junior officers that um, that will be looking at this unfolding and being in a bit of a horror story themselves, um, not not quite understanding how to navigate what they're seeing. Mm. So it's a difficult situation for the public, certainly a diff difficult situation for the police as well. Absolutely, and um, one of the one of the topics you've been talking about a lot with me off the phone is how do we mend the gap? How do we get back to normal? How do we re you know, build this relationship mm -hmm. back to where it once was. And I felt like you really have gone in, 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 a, in a good direction with that. So in a sec, Roland, we're going to play um, the, it's tough to watch, but the video of Nicole, who mm -hmm. you met on the weekend, um, being arrested. Uh, we're going to discuss it a bit and then we're going to see your interview um, where, um, where, where you actually sat down with her. So Maria, let's play the tape. An exemption. That's all right. We'll That's take fine. your details. You don't have to take my details. I don't. Well, I'm not. Your I'm not obliged to give you my details. I know my rights. I know oh, my I'm rights. Sure, you do. Yes. So you can ask away. You are not getting my details, and I do not need to give you my mask exemption. I don't even need to speak to you. Come with me. Excuse me. Come That's my. Me. That's my personal bag. Yep, come with me. Excuse me. You can't do this. Come with me. I don't need to. Excuse me. That is my bag. So now I have you, your now, attention. Now you so have now my have bag. You have Can my you bag. Give some no, I can't. I'm not giving you an end of it. That is my bag. Give Keep me my filming. fucking bag. Keep filming. Give me my bag. Keep filming. Give me. You are antagonising me now. Give me my bag. You are antagonising. 
hunting me! I have anxiety! And ask my now give me my bag! So, give me my bag! So, to save your you anxiety... You are antagonising people! Save your anxiety... Well, give me my give bag! I don't need to! I do you know this? Why are you doing this? Please! You don't need to do this! Everybody else in this train... That's is right. doing the right thing. Because they have any... Do I, they need an exemption? I Where's have your one. exemption? I don't have to show you. It is a personal thing between my doctor and me. I have an exam. I'm not trying to start any give argument. Give the sergeant where I'm you are. Give the I don't sergeant your name. I don't need to give you my name. You know this. I know you can see it in my eyes. You, you, you don't want to be on the train. With I'm going to take your bag outside the railway station. So keep filming. Do you feel like a really big man? Do you feel like a big man? You've just taken a, a young girl's bag off her because she won't present a mask exemption to you or details. You are doing the wrong thing. Crimes against humanity is so big right now. My children, you don't know what you're getting yourself into, do you? You really don't. You've got no idea what is happening in the world. I'm sure you're, you're just you're enforcing. I'm enforcing sure you're this. I'm not going to tell you. You have to do your own. Way. You have to wake yourselves up. No one else is going to do it for you. It's hard to watch. It's hard to watch. Um, what, are, what are your thoughts? Hmm. Look, um, when I try to look at uh, a situation, I obviously want to know both sides of the story. I could never go to a uh, magistrate or a judge and prosecute a, a matter only having one side. Having said that, though, that video sort of tells a pretty clear story. Um, I'm not here to defend or to criticise that officer because I haven't spoken to him. I don't know him. Sometimes police have an off day. Um, depends sometimes on the interaction they had five minutes before that or for the last 10 years prior to that influences the officer. But everyone has a right to expect that an officer is going to uphold their rights and freedoms. That's part of our... Um, that's part of our core duties under our um, under our code of ethics. So, yeah, it's difficult to watch. I, I don't know what was going through that officer's mind and why he took that course of action. Mm -hmm. I can certainly understand uh, Nick's feelings and I commend her for knowing her rights and for standing up for herself. I, um, I don't play the video to be like, look at this, answer for it or anything. Roland's here to have a discussion and um, talk about how we can move forward in a relationship with the people. And that begins with a discussion, as I said. And um, it's important to, ha to have this. And at least Roland took the step to seek out this, per this individual, Nicole, to, as, as an olive branch. And uh, right now we're going to play that video, and I think it's, uh, it's quite beautiful, actually. Hi, Roland. How hey. are you? Nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. Thanks so much for agreeing to come and have a chat today. Yeah, good. It's a Let's beautiful day. Down. Save his arm from the cops. Yeah, yeah. Big, big move. Um, certainly not how I expected to end my career. Um, dropping the keys under the door and knowing I'll probably never go back. But um, it is what it is. Uh, I couldn't really speak publicly. Not that I've ever wanted to speak publicly. But there's things that need to be said and um, messages that need to be given to my colleagues, and not only here in Australia, but globally. But look, thanks so much for coming to have a chat. I just want to touch base with you. Um, lots of people have seen that video. Um, from my perspective, um, I did three decades of uniform policing. Um, I can't really understand exactly what I'm looking at there from the officer's mindset, but. Tell me, before that incident, what was your perception of the New South Wales Police? Look, I value our cops. Yep. My, I have two uncles that are ex-police officers who I've admired my whole life and looked up to and thought they were my heroes. Right. Um, and, you know, we need our cops. We need them to support us in our communities and they're a part of our communities too. Mm. You know, the laws they enforce upon us are their laws, the laws that they're forcing upon themselves and each other, and we've got to make changes. Um, but yeah, I've, I've got the most respect in the world for our police, but um, it's definitely, it's changing just because I'm unsure 
who's upholding our rights anymore. Yeah, right. Things obviously take a bit of a downturn. Mm. You lodging a complaint against these officers? Yeah, look, I didn't really lodge a complaint. I more or less wanted to find out in what way that cop was reprimanded. Was he, was he then educated about what our rights are mm -hmm. if he was to be put in one of those situations again? Right. I wanted to find out what what was going to what was the course of action after that. Did you find it? No. So right. when I was when I spoke to um, the inspector, uh, he basically told me that the police was just doing his job, and he couldn't even tell me that I was within my rights. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't. I didn't have the heart to go through with a um, with a formal complaint. I just I, this man would have had a family to feed and just, I don't know, would it have been worth my energy to even do something like it that? It takes a lot of energy, of doesn't it, people, to, yeah. to do that sort of thing, take that course of action. Um, look, I can tell you that as a police officer, you, you can develop a mindset that um, people need to comply with the directions you're given. Um, you can ask them, um, you can tell them, and then you can make them comply. Mm -hmm. Sometimes um, there's a lot of grey in what cops do, you know. You, you have an end goal in mind which is compliance, but the, the pathway to, uh, to reach compliance can be a murky one at mm -hmm. times. Um, I don't justify what I saw on that video, but your video was fairly, um, fairly telling. And so, look, I wanted to say to you that I'm sorry for what you went through. And I wanted to make sure that, um, that at least you had an ongoing perception and understanding that there are still very many dedicated and decent cops out there. Knowing your rights is very important, um, but equally police officers have to respect those rights. Yeah, and I think that was the scariest part of it for me is realising that there are cops out there that, that don't know. Like, yeah. There are cops out there that don't know my rights. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Either they don't know or um, just through the interaction they are losing their way yeah. and they are taking a path that is not completely appropriate. Mm. Um, but look, I, I, I love the aspect that you bring to this that you are not out for vengeance. You know, because as you say, we need police in our community to be that pillar in society that actually upholds rights and freedoms. Mm. Um, if, if we have officers that are solid in their knowledge and understanding of what they should enforce, what they shouldn't, and the manner in which they should do it, how much force is appropriate, um, then society can have confidence in their officers. Um, I don't want it to be the case where someone like yourself sees a police vehicle or you're on the train, you see the police get on the train and all of a sudden your heart sinks. Yeah. 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 And I guess, like, you know, when we're in those, when we, we're not used to being in police altercations or being confronted by police um, for practicing our basic human rights, such as breathing fresh air, mm. um, and then not being able to defend our rights, that puts people in a really difficult situation, especially when they've got serious, you know, ailments. Mm. Um, and not, not being given that voice is quite, it's scary. So there is, you know, an air of intimidation now with the police. Yeah. But when you've got just, you know, it's, it's, and it's definitely not all cops, um, just from what we, most people have seen come out of Victoria mainly. Um, and then now some incidences in New South Wales, you know, people are quite frightened mm. because they've, they've been, you know, that's, that they've been told that's how you get treated if you step out of line. Yeah. And just... They're more frightened of the cops than they are of any virus, yeah. I think. Yeah. The repercussions of non-compliance yeah. with what I believe are draconian public health orders that um, you know, are, are attacking our basic human rights and freedoms mm. to such an extent um, that it's unparalleled. Mm. Yeah. From what I've seen, the vast majority of people are mums and dads and tradies and um, just basic members of the community just trying to f um, find their way to protect their basic right to survive. Yep. And so um, 
for, for my colleagues, um, I would be saying to them, guys and girls, um, these are not the people we need to be putting on the ground. These are our neighbours. And so um, with that message and with them understanding the impact that their interactions can have on just a law-abiding member of the community, and if we can get that message out to my former colleagues, and not only New South Wales, Victoria, Queensland, every Australian police officer, and then other nations around the world, police officers in every country and military, you did not join to become tools of oppression. And that's what they need to understand. And that's why your story is so important, because law-abiding um, put through a situation that I regret you went through but you're a strong person, you're a positive person. And now you're turning it around, you're making lemonade out of lemons, as they say. Couldn't ask for more from you. But thanks so much for, um, for having a chat with me. Yeah, no, thank you as well. Yeah. And thanks for um, stepping out and standing up. Because without you guys, what hope, like, what hope do we have? Like, some of us have smaller voices, but you guys, mm. you guys could be a serious tool for change. Absolutely, we can. And, you know, how much longer? How much, where do we draw the line? The line's already been crossed multiple times. It has. We need, we need our police officers so to rise up. We're, they are a part of our communities. We're mm. together. Yep. There's no two ways about it. That's just the way it is. So the sooner that people start to realise that, this is a really crucial time in human history mm. and now's the time. Nick, awesome to meet you. I was, I was really keen to have this chat and, um, and, and it's so good to meet positive people. Yeah. You know, we can turn things around but where we put our focus and our energy is the direction that we're going to head. Yeah, and, absolutely. And if, and if we dwell in fear, it shuts us down. Yeah. And I can see you're not there. Don't feed awesome. the fear monster. Absolutely not. <laughs> Good stuff. Well, I'm not going to keep you any longer. Good to a see you. A hug's on the cards there. Good on you. <laughs> oh, that's it. That, that is leadership. Scott Morrison notes. Roland and Nicole, thank you so much for demonstrating that a productive conversation can happen. Like, it was so refreshing. I, oh, guys, let us know what you think in the and Give this a share. I watched that this afternoon. I was just like, wow, look, more, more of that, please. That was, how did you leave following that, Roland? Because that was amazing. Sorry, mate, I just dropped it out there. Go again. I was just saying I was absolutely flabbergasted when I saw that interview. I thought it was an amazing. It's such a great step to see people go in that direction. What were your thoughts from leaving that meeting? Oh, look, I was just so impressed with um, Nick's heart because, you know, she doesn't bear any animosity. Um, she just wants to see that relationship between police and the community repaired. And really that's, uh, that's what I'm about. And that's what uh, we're about with um, even international efforts through policeforfreedom.org, uh, which will become more and more prevalent, hopefully, in uh, interactions with, with police. But um, walking away from Nick, uh, yeah, I've found a new friend in her, and uh, she's just a genuine, good-hearted person. Yeah. The, the comments section is flooding with tears right now. Um, People, people want to see that. People want to see the country come together. Um, we, we all understand uh, a certain level of empathy and what others are going through, and, mm. and that, that's, that's, that's what's meant to be done. That's all we wanted. You know, I think a lot of the um, – you know, take a different example. I think a lot of people would be more understanding of some of the chief health officers' directions and maybe even more compliant if they actually sat down and explained them you know, in a long form interview, if I had Dr. Kerry Chant here, like the, the links, I think it would actually mitigate a lot of the things that she's doing. So she could actually hear some genuine questions, not from the mainstream media, but also it would allow people to actually see, oh, okay, that's why you're doing this. That's why you're doing that. I don't get me wrong. I think a lot of the stuff Dr. Kerry Chant's been doing this pandemic has been terrible, but it all comes back to transparency and honesty and an intellectually mm. honest discussion we're not getting that. And 
Roland and Nicole, I've said it five times already. Thank you for so... If you're listening to this conversation, you don't understand how difficult it is, one, to get a police officer on, show his face, say his name, and two, get a citizen who was abused, who's already been through the ringer, been, you know, her face has gone around already and she's gone viral with this particularly embarrassing clip. A lot of people wouldn't want to be on camera again. To get them to sit down together, have a civil discussion, it, it's, it's, a, it's like finding a needle in the haystack. Full credit to you guys. Thank you so much for doing this. Like, you know, it's one thing for me to rant and rave, but what the hell do I know? You guys have been through it. Thank you so much for speaking up. I just, I, I, I feel like you guys said it all. And I just, on behalf of everyone in the comments, I just want to thank you. Thank you so much. No, well, look, mate, thanks for giving us the platform. And, um, you know, I, I just want to encourage my colleagues my former colleagues, but once a cop, always a cop. We're all part of that family. Remember the reasons you joined, okay? We joined to be a pillar of society. We we joined for the purposes of making our communities safer, all right? Be, be mindful of where you apply pressure and where you use force because uh, that's not what we're about when it's law-abiding, peaceful mums and dads just struggling for their basic survival. Let's Let's get back on track. Absolutely. Um, there's no there's no version of these events, Roland, where you can return back to your, your job, is there? <laughs> don't know that I want it, mate. <laughs> I'm actually <laughs> enjoying sleeping in the dark. Thirty one <laughs> years of shift work. Um, yeah. And 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 wearing all that equipment, um, it's probably take a couple of years for the bruises to subside. But right. uh, we'll see. We don't know what we don't know. We don't know what's around the next corner. Well. I'm a, when I was when I was in school, my mum said to me, Joel, you know, chances are by the time you get out and you get into the workforce, the job you're going to do hasn't even been invented yet. Well, Roland, when we do have these investigations and when we do come out with um, some recommendations from a royal commission, particularly one that's looking into police, I hope that we can create a job where you, you can we can utilize your three one years of experience so that we can reform the police, just as all the other former officers have come out. Um, and it has nothing to do with a monetary benefit. It has to do with improving our country and making Australia great again and increasing the strengthening that bond as a society. Um, was there anything else you wanted to say? The only other thing I'd say is to the community itself, and look, I completely understand your, uh, your anger at what you're seeing on the TV, the um, the violence and the force that's being used, just be mindful. You, you, you're not seeing the thousands of interactions that police have that are peaceful uh, and, and, and that are um, upholding people's freedoms. You're only seeing the ones that the mainstream media want to show you. There's a lot of good police out there that are struggling with this. All right, don't lose faith in your police. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Roland. I um. I'm I'm really grateful for this interview, um, this opportunity to to get this out, um, and that you know you've. I hope other people will also take you up on this and learn from this, and um, just as other interviews we've done uh, inspired people overseas, I hope they also learn this as well. Um, yeah, we've got to come, we've got to come together. We do indeed. Mm. Thanks very much for having me on, mate. Nah, it's been it's been my pleasure. I'm looking forward to having you back eventually. <laughs> All right, guys, you've been listening to Turning Point Australia. This is another um, broadcast brought to you by Turning Point, and um, we don't have any sponsors yet um, because we we rely on uh, the individual donations from ordinary Australians. That means we're not beholden to any big donors, and I like it that way. Um, so look, please, if you if you can share this content, get it as far and wide as possible. We need to spread the common sense and peace um, message. And uh, if you're able to donate, these are tough times. Only donate what you are able to. Feed your family first. Take care of everyone first. Um, and with that said, if you're struggling, reach out to Empowerment Tribe. If you go to my Instagram, I've done interviews with them. Empowerment Tribe are really amazing. If you're struggling to put it on the table, go to them. They'll take care of you. They're absolute legends. Those angels are feeding so many families in in new south wales and they're looking to expand it into victoria but guys thank you so much for tuning in um if you if you can share please share if you can donate please donate and um we're in this together 
in the truest sense of the phrase. I'll see you guys later. Thank you very much.